we're doing an intro for the, for the uh, Dino Datamite software today. And uh, when you get your Datamite, there'll be a printed manual with it and a quick start like shown here. And inside the quick start are separate sheets of paper that describe your particular feature that you got with your system, your particular sensors. Those are all what we think are the most critical things to read. And then the user manual is good backup when you have the time. At least go through, look at the pictures, and see that, oh, I didn't know it could do that. And then you can read about it. Um, another thing, there's a table of contents in the front of the book that gives a nice overview of the entire book in a couple of pages. And there's an index in the back. The index is really helpful. If you've got a particular subject you're interested in, see if the keyword or some of the words that you're interested in are in the index. And I'll refer you right to the correct pages to get more information um, in, the, in the user manual for this. So, but these movie files are also what we want to do to help train people. So when you first get your data mite, uh, the USB data bytes, the newer ones, you want to get the USB communications established. And the first thing you do is you install your USB cable to your data mite. Like I did here. And you see, you're going to get a tone, the USB Connect tone, and usually a found new wizard, found new hardware wizard will pop up. Now, in my case, because my computer has had so many of these data mites on it, it's just going to say that it already has the drivers and everything is fine. In your case, it's not. It's going to bring up uh, a new hardware wizard. That uh, hardware update wizard or hardware installation wizard will look a lot like this. And you can see what it says right here. If your hardware came with a CD, insert it now. And the CD it's talking about is the same CD that you installed your data mite from. It's our blue and silver CD. So you would install that now. When you insert the CD, you might get the installation wizard. This is the same uh, program that you probably installed your data mite software on. Or if you haven't, this is what you're going to get when you install the, uh, the CD that comes with your, your data mite. And there's a couple intro messages here. Here's where you're going to install your Datamite program. And this has nothing to do with getting the USB going. I'm just talking about this as long as we got this up here. And your Dino Datamite, you click here. Your Drag Race Datamite, you click here. And your Road Race Datamite, you click here. Um, there is also, this is to install the program. This is not to install the USB drivers. There is also this button here. And you can see it says install data my three USB drivers. I would strongly suggest you do not do this at this time. Just let the Windows operating system find the USB drivers that are also on this CD. If worse comes to worse, we might go to this because if you install the driver twice, it will not work either. So don't do this. I'm just letting you know that this is available. If push comes to shove, we may have to do that. But anyway, but right now we just want to get the USB driver working. Uh, so we're going to get out of this. You sure you want to quit it? Let me say a couple other things here. Let's say no. Uh, there's some other nice features on this program. Obviously, you can see we got a lot of our products, or everything we got is on the CD. There are movie files here you can look at. Um, so anyway, but um, for now, since we're installing the USB driver, just get out of this. And there's a very good chance that this will not come up, that when you install the driver, the computer's concentrating on other things. But right now, we want to get back to our wizard. Now, because my computer's already had this, it's not going to work correctly on mine. But you, usually what you're going to do is just install the software automatically. You're going to insert the CD, and then you're just going to follow the program instructions, and it's going to install the drivers correctly. For you more com uh, advanced computer users, I'm going to, sh going to show you how you can find uh, what COM port the USB has assigned itself to using Control Panel. Here's Control Panel. You're going to go to System. Double click on it, hardware tab, device manager, ports, common LPT. And this is what it's going to look like. This is the 
the USB port. We're, we're talking to the USB port just like a serial port, but a much higher speed serial port. And this happens to be the one we're using. And you can look in here. Um, one thing that you may want to get into if you have to, don't worry about this. This is all set up by the program when it talks, when it starts talking to the USB. This advanced button, though, this is telling you what COM port number it has been assigned. We can only use COM ports up to 15. And you can see there's a lot of COM ports here. You, if for some reason this would have been assigned COM port 28 or something, you're going to have to go in and change this to a COM port that is 15 or less. I strongly suggest you stay away from COM port 3. That's a strange port, a lot of times used as a modem port. It has sort of uh, has special connotations to, to most programs. So I'm going to get out of here. But that's how you can find the COM port in control panel. And I'm going to now show you uh, what to do in the Datamite software. Here's the Datamite software, as you're probably going to get it right from us. What you want to do is, in order to talk, to the data mic, you've got to have a file that is expecting the right type of data mic. I clicked on data mic right here. Now you could just change this to the different data mics we've had over the years, but what happens then? It, it it doesn't work as well because there's some other settings behind the scenes that conflict. So what you want to do, this is the better way to do, and this is a, uh, told you in those quick start. Uh, setups, those loose, loose pieces of paper that come inside your book, is you want to open an example test that matches the data my data logger you got. So I clicked on File, Open, Example Folders, and if you have a black box, you'd use this. That's one of our older data my data loggers. If you have the old four channel, it'd be one of these. Uh, this happens to be uh, the old data my two, the blue box. We are using the silver box, which is this USB data mic example file here. And your paperwork will tell you this. If you got the mini, you'd open this one. So we're going to open this one. And this is now the test that's on the main screen. So now when we go click on data mic, we have the right data mic type. And everything behind the scenes is set up correctly for this type of data mic. What we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can find our COM port. And it says these appear to be possible COM ports for this computer, 1, 4, and 5. And from my experience, typically the highest number you see here is the Datamite channel. It may not always be, but this gives you some channels to possibly check. So like I said, I'm going to go change it to 5, the highest one I saw. And now let's see if we can talk to the data mic, or at least see the readings. And that you do by clicking on, on current readings. And it says, these changes, do you want to save your changes and say yes. And here it's checking the COM port. And if it's communicating, like you got here, you're going to see it's established communications. And when you see numbers flickering around a little bit here, you know you're communicating. Down here in these boxes, these are the channels, and this is sort of the raw data coming in. We'll talk about setting up these gauges and stuff later, but there's two sets of 16 boxes. Now we're looking at the standard analog channels, which is uh, the board temp, power volts, and weather, and then these calculated uh, parameters of correction factor and density altitude. Or you can look on this one, these set of 16, Accelerometers mean nothing to uh, your dyno stuff, but here are your, your thermocouples will be in this column and your RPMs will be in this column. And you can see we are getting an RPM reading here also. And these thermocouple readings are very high because nothing's plugged into them. That's sort of where they go. They, they drift real high when nothing's plugged in. But here you can see we are getting our dyno RPM. And if you move things around, you know, open and close the throttle a little bit, you can see that we're getting readings. So we have established communications. And it appears that everything is working. This concludes this first intro movie.